Okay. Um, my topic was using a compound microscope. So first you turn on the light source, which is three different buttons. One is the on and off. The second is a dial that you turn to 10. And the third dial is one that you adjust according to the specific specimen you're using. And then you take the slide that you're using and you uh, put it in the back right hand corner of the stage and clip that in so it's secure. After that, you choose the lowest ocular lens, which is a blue 4X. And then you adjust your specimen so it's directly in the path of the light. So using the buttons that move the stage back and forth and left to right. After that, you use the dial that adjusts the height of the stage, so closer or further from the ocular lens. After that, you can change the ocular lens so you can see more into more detail. And then after that, you can record whatever you needed to for that specimen. Okay, that was <laughs> really amazing. Are you going to have a test on this? Yeah. Okay. Um, what was your third to last point? Third to last point was uh, changing the ocular lens from the, the furthest one to the closest one. Excellent. So, um, how long did it take you to memorize all this information? Thirty-two minutes. Thirty-two minutes. Mm -hmm. That's pretty impressive. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, you want to go next time? Yeah. You're going to do the Bill of Rights. Yeah. Okay. I had a, the biosphere, the four main points of the biosphere. And okay. First is organism. An organism is just one of one specific species. So I picked a flower and there's just one flower. Okay. And then a population is the second largest and that's all the flowers of the same species in any given area. And there's a community and that's the animals and the other organisms that would influence that same initial organism. So anything that influences the initial first organism. Then an uh, ecosystem is the largest and has to do with everything abiotic and biotic factors, which would be the trees and the rocks and everything in a larger area, the largest area of the biosphere. Okay. What was your second point? <coughs> the population. The population is the group of the same organ. Okay, very good. How long did it take you to? Probably about. 15 minutes as well? 15. Because of only the four categories? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I was kind of familiar with them in a sense. Do you, do, you, um, uh, do you have a test on this coming up? I do, yeah. Okay, very good. And do you understand all of these things yeah. and how they fit together? Yeah. Excellent. All right, very good. Ryan. So my, main, so my topic was based on electricity, and I was working with electrons. And so everything, so the chapter started out with everything consists of atoms. Atoms are thing, are, consist of three different types of charges, electrons, neutrons, and protons. Protons have positive charges and electrons have negative charges. But when it comes to with the flow of electricity, you're dealing mostly with electrons. So when it started out with one main point was electrical current. Electric current consists of el electrons throwing through a circuit or wire or copper, ring, copper wiring or copper wire and they go to an endpoint and they're used, to make, they're used to do work as the definition of energy. The next one is, the next main point for this electrical topic is electromagnetism. Elect, or, I mean, uh, magnetism, sorry. The magnetism is consisted of, uh, well, consists inside of a electric current, and that- Inside of a what? Inside of an electric current, huh. and that is the different, for, that is uh, the different forces that are acting on that mean um, a weak force that pull that makes things go together, but it also is a strong force that makes things come together. Next is the electromagnetic force, and this is the force that you generally um, is the interaction between electromag uh, or the I'm um, sorry is the interaction between uh, the magnetic force and an electric current. And then the next one you're dealing with is a circuit. The circuit is a complete. There is a circuit that has a starting point from a thing from a certain topic that gives off an electric body or an electrical current, and and then there's an endpoint that's actually going to be using it. Okay. All right. Very good. So th this is for a test in physics, is that? No, nope, I oh. actually oh. Uh, picked a I picked a topic in physics that I was not too familiar with, and I wanted to try it, but 
We do have a test, but it's in motion. Okay. All right. So, but you, it was out of your physics textbook. Is yes. That right? Okay. All right. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and uh, let's see. What was your um, mm, let's see your second main point. What was that about? My second main point was uh, was magnetism, and okay. I described what magnetism is. Okay. Very good. Could you tell me all the points backwards? You don't have to, but could you? Uh, all the main points would be circuit, electromagnetism, magnetism, um, electrical current, and electrons. Excellent. You know it backwards and forwards. Okay. You all set? Don't do it again. I already did it. <laughs> Not for TV. <laughs> Not for Oprah. <laughs> Um, my topic is the role that statistics play in social problems. Excellent. Um, the worst topic that has ever been said is that the number of children in the United States killed by gunfire will d double every year, which will eventually surpass the number of children that die in the United States every year. So obviously that was an attention-getting kind of statistic. Um, most statistics come from the range of the government use. The government uses statistics to get people on their side and to bring issues to mind that they feel are important. And once the media grabs hold of these statistics, they like to use scary numbers that get society worked up and big money worked up. So that way, eventually a problem or a social problem comes to mind and then there's causes and people trying to fix it. So the best main point of using a statistic on, in your daily life is to make sure your resources are good, to check where they're coming from, and to use statistics responsibly and the scarier the number, usually the falser they are. The statistics. The statistics, yes. Okay. Can you tell me what your third to final point was? That once society gets worked up over a statistic, that's when big money and the causes come into play to create the problem that needs to be solved just from the numbers. Okay. Very good. And this is in social problems. Yep. Is that uh, Point Dexter's yep. class? Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Do you have a test coming up? Not Yep, but I think he's sneaky like that, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be prepared. Right. Excellent. How long did it take you to memorize About this? 35 minutes. 35 minutes. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, very good. And let's see, are we waiting until next? Mm, maybe, yeah, probably. Okay. Right. You go ahead. Okay. Mine is in anatomy and physiology. I'm doing it on my pituitary gland hormones. Um, there's the anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland consists of the thyroid stimulating hormone, which promotes and controls your thyroid. Um, the luteinizing hormone promotes ovulation and your corpus luteum, which produces progesterone. And interstitial cells in men, which promote testosterone. And then there is the growth hormone, which promotes growth. And it also... Are you in your palace? I am in my palace. Okay. It is a sugar-sparing hormone and does fat catabolism versus carb catabolism. And then there is... Concentrate. Prolactin, which increases breast size in pregnancy and after pregnancy and promotes lactation. And then there's follicle stimulating hormone, which promotes growth of the follicle in ovaries and the seminiferous tubules in men. And that promotes testosterone and sperm. And then there is melanostimulating hormone which produces melanin which controls your skin color and then there is mm, adrenocorticotropic hormone which promotes and maintains the function of your adrenals which are on top of your kidneys 
And then in the posterior gland, there is antidiuretic hormone, which promotes your water retention and the amount of urine you're allowed to excrete. And then there is the oxytocin, which is a positive feedback loop system. And that helps with smooth muscle contraction. And I believe that's all. Wow. Okay. So you, you're you're in A and P two. Is that yes. right? Okay. Excellent. And I, you you do have a test coming up. No yes. doubt. Yeah. Okay. All on that. The pituitary gland is amazingly complicated and diverse. Yes, and... it is a lot. Okay. Does a pituitary gland in a woman look different from a pituitary gland in a man? I don't believe so. Oh, that's interesting. But they can control uh, gender based functions in some way. Okay, that's very interesting. All right, so what was your fourth to last point? Melanocytes. Melanocytes? So your melanostimulating mm -hmm. hormone. Which control? Your melanin so. and your skin color. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. How long did it take you to memorize this gargantuan amount of information? <laughs> Probably like 20 minutes, actually. 20 minutes. It 20 minutes. <laughs> Um, how long do you, do you think uh, it will take your classmates to memorize that much? Uh, at least an hour. <laughs> at least an hour, I would say. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And memorizing all the terms mm -hmm. and knowing what they do, it would take Memory them an hour? That, yeah. Repetitive thinking, I guess. Versus... Rote memorization. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Very good. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.